In this problem, we're told a bat strikes a .145 kilogram baseball. Just before impact, the ball is traveling horizontally to the right at 40 meters per second. When it leaves the bat, the ball is traveling to the left at an angle 30 degrees above the horizontal with a speed of 52 meters per second. If the ball and bat are connected for 1.75 milliseconds, find the horizontal and vertical components of the average force on the ball. So there's two different parts here. There's the initial part and the final part. So what we want to do is draw what's going on for each of them. So here's an initial. Right, so what we want to do is draw the initial part, and then we're also going to draw the final part, right? So this is the initial. Now let's do, right, so let's draw what's happening in initially. So we have this ball, it's gonna be traveling to the right at 40 meters per second. So imagine it's just like a pitch, right? So here's our ball traveling to the right at 40 meters per second, right, horizontally. So pretty simple, and then final, right? Let me actually do it up here. So final, what's happening at the end? So at the end, uh, it's gonna hit the bat, right? So imagine it's hitting the bat and it's gonna go back this way. So we know it's gonna travel to the left at an angle, right? So imagine the ball's gonna travel like this and then here's the horizontal and it's gonna travel to the left 30 degrees above it. So 30 degrees above the horizontal and it's going to be traveling at a, fee, a speed of 52 meters per second, right? So 52 meters per second, 30 degrees above the horizontal, right? So these are our initial and final drawings. So let me talk about now how we're gonna solve this problem. So in order to solve this problem, you need to know that average force, or F average, is equal to the change in momentum over the change in time, right? And so what the time is essentially is how long it's connected for. Momentum, we all, uh, you guys should know the formula for momentum, which is just mv. So if we want to find the change in momentum, right, it would just be, right, so imagine we're going to have initial and final. So you could say m, right, and the m is constant, so we don't need to write m initial, m final, but just m times um, v final minus m times v initial, right? The final momentum minus the initial momentum gives you the change in it, right? And we can just factor out an m of these and just rewrite it as m times v final minus v initial over the change in time, right? And this is the formula we're going to use to find the average force, right? But keep in mind what they want us to do is find it in each direction. So in the positive or in the horizontal and vertical direction. So when we solve these, right, we're going to need to label it in the x and y. So we're going to say the velocity in the x, right? So m times v final x minus v initial x, right, over the change in time. Right, and that's gonna give us the average force in the x. Right, and then we also wanna do it in the y. So F average y, the only thing we change is it's gonna be the final velocity in the y minus the initial velocity in the y. Right, over the change in time. And so we just need to solve for these formulas and then uh, we get average force in each direction. So let's write what we're given now. So what are we given? So we know the mass of the ball, right? So the mass of the ball is given, it's 0.145 kilograms. And so we also know the impulse time. They tell us it's gonna be connected for uh, 1.75 milliseconds. And when we solve equations like this, we need to make sure it's in seconds, right? Because this needs to be in seconds in time in order to get uh, F in Newtons. So we need to make sure this is in seconds. So uh, if we divide by a thousand, it's gonna give it in seconds, right? Because milli just means a thousand. So divide this by a thousand. So one one point seven five divided by a thousand, you're gonna get it equals point zero zero one seven five seconds. Right? So this is gonna be the impulse. So now we have M, we have change in time, and we need each of these variables. So let's write those out. So V one or V initial X, V initial Y, V final X, V final Y. So let's look at our image, right? The things we drew, and then we'll use that to determine. So what is the initial velocity in the x direction? So we look and we see in the initial, it's traveling to the right at 40 meters per second. And so when we solve these problems, we label the right to be positive and the left to be negative. Therefore, it's just going to be 40 meters per second is our initial velocity in the x, right? In the horizontal. And then vertical is y, right? Is it moving in the y though? No, it's only moving in the horizontal direction. And since it's only moving in horizontal, it's not moving in the y meaning V initial Y is just zero meters per second. So that's initial and final for the X and Y, or initial uh, in the X and Y. So now let's do the finals. So 
how do we find the X and Y components of this? So you should know how to do this already, uh, right? So the X is just going to be 52 times uh, the cosine of 30. And then the Y is 52 times the sine of 30, right? So you should know that. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think I need to go over it, but yeah. So the X and Y, these are our uh, components. But keep in mind, we have to uh, take into account direction. So since this is going to the left now, this is going to be negative. And since this is going up, we say up's positive and down's negative. So this will stay positive. So this is going to be minus 52 times the cosine of 30. And then this is just 52 times the sine of 30. Right, so those are each of our values in the uh, or the final x and y. So now what we can do is just use our equations to solve. Right, we have every variable. So let's do f average in the x. So it's just going to be the mass, which we know is 0.145 multiplied by uh, v final x, which is minus 52 times the cosine of 30, and then minus v initial x, which is 40. Right, and then divide this whole thing by the change in time, which is the impulse, which is 0 0.00175 uh, seconds. Right, so you want to plug this in. So do 0.145 times minus 52 times the cosine of 30 minus 40. Divide that by 0 0.00175, and uh, when you do that, you're going to get it equals minus 7045.618. So you can round whoever you want. Uh, but keep in mind what this means. So this is going to be the force in newtons. But keep in mind the direction, what it means. So this is hor this is in the horizontal direction, right? And we say right's positive, left's negative. So this means it's uh, 7045.618 newtons. But since it's negative, it means to the left, right? So to the left. So that's going to be your answer to the first part, right? So the horizontal, or yeah, the horizontal average force is 7045.618 or however you want around to, to the left. So now let's do the y. So it's going to be the same thing we just got to plug in. So it's going to be the mass which is the same times uh, v final y which is 52 times the sine of 30 minus v initial y which is 0. So minus 0 uh, and then all over the impulse which is 0 0.00175. Right, so you're gonna to wanna to do this. So 0.145 times 52 times the sine of 30 minus zero, divide that by 0 0.00175. And when you do this, you're going to get 2154.2857 uh, and so on. You can round to however you want. All right, so 2154.2857 Newtons. Uh, and then since this is positive, it's just going to be upwards, right? Because up is positive, down is negative. So 2, 1, 5, 4 newtons upward. Or you could say, yeah, upward. So 7, 0, 4, 5 newtons to the left is your answer to or the horizontal. And then the vertical is 2, 1, 5, 4 newtons upward. So yeah, these are your answers. And hopefully you found this useful.